Hello and good afternoon. So this video is a little bit different because I have a very special and interesting uh, guy next to me which I met while traveling in Malaysia and this is the thing I like about traveling you meet all those interesting people and characters so without further ado I give you Tommy hello hey I'm normal I'm not crazy how's that not yet, not yet. <laughs> so okay. uh, tell us a little bit about yourself uh, what well, do you do? How now I'm, you're retired, but yeah, I'm. I used to be a bad guy, and I'm now. Uh, I'm doing movies, and I'm trying to do uh, life right. You know, I am not mafia no more. I, I was with the, uh, the, best mafia organization in the world, the Irish Mafia. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're. Uh, that's an interesting so story. Yeah. You don't hear this every day, meeting random people who were connected to the Irish Mafia all the way in Malaysia. That's something special. <clears throat> well, I was number three most wanted at one time, and uh, I had everybody in the world after me. They chased me for 10 years and couldn't catch me. Okay. I had every uh, different uh, disguise. Uh, I walked right by the FBI every place and they didn't know me, eh? So they're not as smart as they think they are. So how come uh, does a Irish former mafia guy end up all the way in Malaysia? Well, they took all my money. I had uh, about 230 million. They end up getting that on me. And uh, I had five offshore accounts. And uh, they went to the extent of, of kidnapping the bankers out of the Cayman Islands. Okay. Yeah, and they were put in jail in Florida. Okay. Until they reviewed reviewed the signature of everybody that was had money in there. Oh, okay. And uh, yours truly come up. They took five accounts from me. Okay. So uh, when they put me in jail too. Oh, that's terrible. A guy like me should never be in jail because I'm innocent to start with. Well, everybody goes to yeah, goes to prison we, is innocent. Have you seen yeah, the, horror, the the movie? Everybody. Shawshank Redemption. Everybody <clears throat> is innocent. Yeah, but I, but they never really. I, uh, I'll tell you the truth. I got charged for this. They charged me for racketeering, murder. Rico. Oh uh, yeah. Rico. The Rico. And uh, they, they only, they, they could only give me 17 years. That's all. You know, because they never had one thread of evidence. Not even hearsay. Nobody knew me. Okay. And I was called the Canadian Goose. The Canadian Goose? Yeah, my name was the Canadian Goose. Okay. I supplied 32% of the crystal meth business in the United States. It was called the Canadian Goose Meth. Okay. Crystal meth, 96% pure. That kind of sounds like the story of Breaking Bad and all the Heisenberg Break, and all that yeah, series. Yeah, but Breaking Bad actually stole <clears throat> two of the scenes out of my novel. Okay. And they called me when I got out of jail and started uh, doing my book better. Okay. And they said, um, you stop using uh, Breaking Bad. Okay. And I said, why? Why? They said, well, you're copyright infringements. I said, well, if you check on it, my copyright supersedes yours. So you stop. I named it the real Breaking Bad Gangster Ways. And uh, they had to change Breaking Bad off of theirs. They, they got another title now, but they still use Breaking Bad on a subtitle on below. Okay. So, but they've made over 40 billion dollars. I know, everybody in the world knows this yeah. show. But I am the real Breaking Bad, no bullshit. I would make 1,100 kilos of 96% pure, and I never did, I'm the best smuggler in the world because I went through the worst, mo through the United States and Canada, and never did get caught. That's Not an interesting once. story. That sounds like you're kind of like the small Pablo Escobar of Canada. Well, any... Uh, yeah, Pablo Escobar, uh, Guzman, they were big cartel. Everybody's got them built out to big gods. Yeah. But they only had 5%, 4% of the cocaine business. I wasn't in that business. I was in the crystal in meth. A, in and a they, different kind of business, yes. None of the dangerous people like that were in the crystal meth. So I controlled the, the crystal meth business. Okay. And I was, I would say 15 times bigger than both of them. Okay. I, I supplied 32% of all the crystal meth in the United States. Okay, this is a graveyard. It's supposed to be a sacred place. 
I had some real good meetings in graveyards. People don't like going to graveyards. I met Frank Catroni, one of the biggest mafia bosses, in a graveyard. And now you met Michael from the Dodo Explorers also in the yeah. graveyard. So you never know what kind of deal we're gonna be talking. This is a nice spot. Yep. Ah. So, uh, tell me a little bit about the deal that you made in the graveyard. Well, Frank Catroni was a big, important mafia, but he was, he had the real troubling bloodlines, like being an Italian. Okay. And Italians are known for not being able to trust them. And for being trigger happy. What's that? For being trigger happy. Trigger happy, and they'll shoot you for a matchstick. Okay. Uh, so me and Catroni were talking about a crystal meth business. Uh, their cocaine was getting weaker and weaker out of Colombia. Okay and they couldn't trust anybody because it was cut when they get there. And so he got a hold of me. We met in a graveyard and at 9 o'clock at night. Obviously at night because it doesn't have yeah, to be at day. 11 o'clock at night, it was dark anyway. And it was raining, right? No, it wasn't raining. Because this is how all the movies start. Yeah, well, dark and it's raining. No, no. He, he talked very nice and very good, but, but I never done any business with him because I know I'd have got screwed. And with me and him, if we had any complications, there would be hundreds of people dead over it. Aye. So I licked, I didn't want no mafia war, and but uh, I don't like killing people either, but uh, it happens too. You gotta be ready for about anything. And, but, and my Italians just aren't trustworthy. The Irish are the cream of the crop. They don't never say nothing. An Italian will yap, yap, yap. He's gonna kill you, gonna kill you. Yeah. Try to scare the shit out of you. But an Irishman will never say nothing. But if you keep fooling with an Irishman, they'll never say nothing, but they'll come over there and cut your fucking throat. Yeah, I can imagine that because some yeah. people say that Romanian people are kind of like Irishmen as well. I mean, we are shutting up and yeah, we're, yeah. we're oh, yeah. quiet, but if you bust our balls or if you step on our toes, then we're gonna go and we're gonna go at it. Back in the old days, the, uh, the Italians, the Jews, all of them run over the Irish in New York and all over, just like they were dogs. Okay. And they even put signs up saying, uh, no niggers, no dogs, and absolutely no Irish. Oh, okay. okay? That was all Absolutely over. no Irish. Yeah, Makes sense. the Irish <laughs> were not just no good, eh? They're worse than dogs and niggers. In a way, I kind of get it, but come on, yeah. why do you have to be like this? I mean... That's what it was. That's history. You can't do nothing about history. I'm not inventing history. Sir. I know you're not inventing history, they, but the, the black guys, they had the worst thing in the South than the Irish guys, the Irish guys had. We were the same. Okay. Everybody hated us. Now, they run over us, and they run over our kids, our women, and everything. We got organized, and we took over Manhattan, and we run them goddamn Italians into the dark and are still scared today. And okay. Yes. And the Jews completely are neutral. And they were one of the worst killers in New York too, the Jews. I and heard about that. The Jews and the goddamn Italians. Maya Lansky, he was the Jew. He yeah. could not be a yeah. mafia head with... Well, no, but they were the together, the, the Italians and the, and the Jewish, the Jews yeah. were together. But when the Irish... We were so potent and so mean and so ruthless. We killed them sons of bitches everywhere, and every time they even showed up, we killed them. Okay. And uh, like Leonardo DiCaprio and the gangs of New York, you know, the butcher and all that, he come back to kill the butcher, and uh, he did. Okay. And that was a true story, and that's my family. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio uh, played Tom Donnelly, and what's my name? Tommy Donnelly. Tommy Donnelly, you betcha. And uh, anyway, the, so it the, right now today, the muscle business, you know, having muscle is worth a hundred billion a year. Okay. The Italians pay the Irish a whole bunch of money to do their muscle. Uh huh. Right today, okay. So hired muscle. Yeah, it's yeah. mafia. This yeah, is mafia, mafia, man. Yeah, hired muscle. So anyway. The Italians are so scared of the Irish. Okay, so that's just the way that is. So, now you're retired. Now what are your plans for the future? I just like to have no pressure whatsoever. Okay. Which these movies are bringing a lot of pressure to me. 
Okay. A lot of people are underestimating me and sabotaging my web page and and my books and all that. And why and do you think that? They're jealous and they think they can push me around. They think they can profit upon your success or upon well, your history. Well, they've already they've already uh, put my books all through India, all through everywhere. Okay. And they're all taken down. And what made you start actually writing about these things? Because technically a mobster would not write novels and books about his life, you know? Well... Unless you're like I mean, Henry Hill from The Goodfellas or whatever. Ah, oh, that stuff is good movies, excellent movies, you know? Yeah. But it's not true. Okay. I tell you what, I, I was raised a country boy, a okay. cowboy. I'm a cowboy. Okay. <clears throat> I'm a professional horse trainer. Okay. And I can rope and ride as good as anybody. Good. Because I have no idea about roping well, and riding. But I'm not really mafia material, but but when I get into conflicts, okay, I'm not scared of nobody. And, so uh, anyway, to write about it now, I'm gonna. I need money. Ah, obviously. I need money, and I'm not gonna go into the drug business. I could make ten million dollars a week if I want to right now. Okay. Just by writing a book. I'm the best cook in the world. Oh, you're I also make, cooking. I make crystal meth. Oh, well, the other kind of cooking, yeah, makes oh, sense. Yeah, <laughs> I can make 50 kilos a week. Yeah. Of 96% pure, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna stick with these movies. Uh, I'm gonna try to develop them. Mm -hmm. I've got a two con man series. I own uh, some of the greatest racehorses in the world series. I've got a pretty good portfolio. That's a good thing. It's worth probably 12, to. 12 billion dollars if I can get it developed. Okay. I think that's a lot better and makes me feel better to do that. Than Obviously, I mean, it's better than cooking meth and being on the run from the police and being yeah. with all that stress on your ass. I and almost whatever. got a life, life, life. And uh, I had connections in, 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 in Washington. My cousin was a senator, got me out of jail. Yeah, that's a good thing. But that ain't gonna happen again. That's a good thing. As long as that doesn't happen again, that's a good thing. No, but so I'm going to be doing the gangster ways, the cowboy con man, and, and the maximum security. That's a racehorse story mm -hmm. uh, about the best horse in 2020 in the world. And then a bunch of people were uh, doping, doping the horse to make him go faster and faster. So they're so basically revealing I'm, the truth about the horse industry. Yeah, well, I'm a professional horse trainer. Okay, yeah, the sport of I kings got tattered. I win 400 races so... training horses, and I win five, 13 stake races. Okay. Broke five track records. Uh, I know the horse business. Yeah, that's very good. I don't. I told you I don't know anything about the horse business yeah, because yeah, I well, never was in the horse business. Yeah. But I'm lucky that you can teach me about it and tell me a little bit about well, this. Well, it's a really a beautiful. Uh, beautiful life and I can imagine but you have to have also the cash for it yes and I'm to invest if I ever make any money I'm going back in the racehorse business okay that's a good thing I'm poor. but so you don't use drugs you don't take them then why would you make them for the money for money no no I don't uh, do drugs or anything I I don't even smoke a cigarette never in my life that's a good thing do you drink Oh yeah, I've got to have a drink. <laughs> okay. Every Irishman has a drink. Every Irishman has a drink. Yeah, that's why I ask you if you mm -hmm. drink because if you have an Irishman that doesn't drink, you have you cannot trust you, him. Oh, can't trust him. No, no. You no. cannot trust him. I at like all. beer and uh, whiskey. Yeah, no, I put my fist up. I have a little whiskey. I can't stay away from that. I got Ah, okay. So you have the the yeah. fighter blood in you, and you have whiskey. I have the worst. Go a little bit. I have been blessed with the worst Irish temper in everybody. It has been a curse to me all my life. Okay, then I should be careful what kind of questions no, no, I no, ask I, you. No, 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 I'm good, but even a week or two ago, somebody bothered me a little bit, and I was in a bad mood, and I just felt like going over there and tearing him up. Now, that's terrible. Uh, don't do that in Malaysia, because no, you never know, who, know. who you're going to stumble into. That is that Irish temper. Yeah, I get it. The Irish temper is a curse. Yeah, some say it's a curse, some say it's a blessing. Depends on which side yeah, of the well, coin you are. Yeah, well... Depends on which side of the fist you are. That's more important. I have went from from being a guy that had total control over everything to now punks are beating me out of my books and stuff like this. I, I went a little bit too far being off. a citizen. Uh, too far off. Yeah, I, I got to get a little bit of force back. And uh, I think, you know, like them guys that uh, done that, if they known who I was, they wouldn't be doing stuff like that. Um, what would you prefer? Continuing that life or this one? Well, that one there was uh, the, the drug life, the mafia. I was like a king. I can imagine. And I tell you what, I, the, the, the adrenaline rush 
of being somebody yeah is really real okay. and when i walked out anybody got out of my way and when i just have to just say one word yes sir yes sir okay and then a whole truck pickup full of cash comes in every month to me like i'm the lord okay like i'm the king okay of getting his taxes okay okay so it, it was a real adrenaline um and i miss it but you know i i just don't have the heart to do it again i did it once in my life i think i went a little bit mentally ill for about 20 years of my life okay and but at this age you cannot do it anymore or i just don't have when i say go to hell to you okay nobody takes it serious now ah yeah nowadays okay? not really that much so, but i don't want to be in that business i like to have nice things nice conversation with nice people and nice people and travel and and maybe use this for entertainment you know what i mean okay at what age did you retire by the way what, what's that at what age did you retire i was always retired no i mean what at what age well, I, did you they, retired from the mob from the mob well i'm still mob i know but technically you're not doing it anymore oh no they kicked me out they said don't you do nothing anymore don't even at what age uh about 2000 okay so pretty they said just don't ago. do nothing don't do nothing okay. and i went to jail for i did about 10 years actually ah okay so at least you had some time to think about it and uh, well uh, they got me out of the states right away but canada picked it up and and it was illegal sentence and everything but they made me do six years or seven years up there in canada on parole okay not in jail maybe a year and then on parole but canada are just dirty bastards because that's being crooked there's no parole follows an american sentence to okay. canada but they did for me when did you get at what age did you get inside the mafia you told me that you were born inside of it uh, my mother is Hazel Viola Donnelly. Okay. And uh, he he uh, was chased out of New York by El Capone. Okay. Back in the early, Jesus, I think it was 29 or something, or 30. Okay. And um, so that's who my mother is. is uh, uh, she's Hazel Viola Donnelly. <clears throat> I'm second cousin to the people that are running the mafia right now. Okay. And, uh, but they tell me to just stay out of the business and go do your movies and leave us alone and shut up. I said, okay, I'll do this. Just and do. at what age are you starting to get more involved and more involved in this thing? Well, I was in the ranch, on the ranch, and uh, there were some people stealing our cattle. And my old man said, you go up there and stop that. And he said, once and for all. And when dad said that, that means you stop it. Okay. I come home drunk one night. Up in the hills, there's lights. So I goes up there with my dog. I had an Irish wolfhound. Okay. Went up there, and sure enough, they had a, a portable pen, and they had 20 head of cows. They were they butchered one. Okay. And I went in there, and he had three sons. And uh, I tried to stop them. <clears throat> they start beating the shit out of me, all three of them. Oh, okay. Oh, really bad, and that. But they didn't count on that Irish wolfhound jumped out uh -huh. and took all the, the back muscle right off the one guy. Okay. And then he clamped right on top of the other guy's shoulder and just crushed his shoulder. Okay. And the other guy, he ripped his arm right off, like right down. And then I stopped the dog, right? The Irish wolfhounds are killers. Yeah, they are mean son of a bitches. Yeah. Anyway, they got out of there and then their old man come with a shovel and tried to hit me over the head with the shovel. And I didn't want to hit the old man, but I took the shovel away from him and I put him up on a, a pole they had okay. there to put their pen up. And I put barbed wire all the way around him, around his throat. And then I, I took a, one of the, the spade there and I twisted it and made it so he couldn't get loose. Yeah. And sense. then it grew into his stomach and grew into, the kids never come back and got their old man. He was on there three days later and the section people on the track seen him and said that's a crucifixion. Okay. So the cop and the preacher come out and said that's the most gruesome thing they've ever seen. Okay, but so that's a, that's pretty graphic for a kid going for his cattle. I know, but so what happened was the whole community got mad. The preacher said he's a gatekeeper of the community. Okay. And the devil walks amongst us, me. Okay. For doing something like this. Okay. And anyway, my mom made a deal with the mafia and said. He's a brat, we can't handle him. Take him to the mafia. Get your men to straighten him out and send him back. 
Okay, so you went there to be straightened out, to About become... 18 years old. Ah, to become a proper guy. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like some guys who go in an army, you went yeah. to the mafia. Yeah, so they, it didn't work out. I went after them too, so... And you became a hitman? Or, well, a made man? Oh, I run over a couple. No, they never... I was always a made man. I was born into it. Okay. Yeah, well, I don't know how it is in the Irish mafia. I know how it is in the Italian mafia, because that one you see on television and the one you see in the movies. In the, if they were born into it, they don't have to prove okay, themselves. Okay, they don't have to prove themselves. Yeah. Okay, so, good. Anyway, I, 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 uh, they're telling me, go ahead and say what you want. Nobody believes you anyway. I said, okay, I don't care. Uh, I'm not mafia no more. You guys can go fuck yourself. And that, that sounds but, pretty... But every time I need something, I call them up and they help me every time. Oh, that's a good thing. Yeah, at least yeah. they don't forget. No, they, they, An Irish man never forgets. They, when they hear me, they, they say, it's the fucking con man. <laughs> and they all laugh, what the fuck do you want? And I tell them, and then they say, all right, we'll look after him, but don't you fucking come around here. That's all I hear. So that goes to show you guys, you meet a lot of interesting people while you're traveling. And you never know who you're gonna stumble in, in a small hostel in Malaysia. And what about you, Gigi? What have you been doing for the past several hours? Editing. Editing? What are you editing? I'm um, actually helping Tommy getting his book released. Okay. So he can tell his side of the story. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Why are you helping him? What happened to his book? Um, I don't know exactly. There was like a misunderstanding. But yeah. And how is that going for you now? Oh, it's been a few hours. It's been a few hours? <laughs> yeah. And how is the story that you're editing? Is it any good? It's insane. You guys should check it out. I'm almost finished. I have seven pages left. Seven pages left? Out of 200. Out of 200. Okay, so the book is going to be released then. Yes. Okay, uh, tell the people where they can find the book. Uh, I think Tommy should tell that himself. Or if he doesn't, like you can find the book on Tommy's page web page yes which we will link in the description and also his amazon or whatever other means of selling he has we will link it in his description in our description right if you're into gangster stuff check it out yeah his stories are interesting and totally different than any other guy from canada that i ever met <laughs> so canadian guy in the irish True. mafia that's something you don't hear every day uh on parole and this was the end of my sentence and when I was driving around in Calgary, there was a black uh, car with detectives in it and would follow me and stop me and, uh, and take me out and push me around. And they said, we got a bigger gang than you got and uh, you're nothing and kept telling me all this shit. And one day I got mad. They stopped me and stopped me and give me a ticket for whatever. And I said, you guys better look out because the Irish Mafia has 24 million members and about a third of them are police officers and politicians. You're working right with the Irish Mafia and you don't know it, you dumb bastards. <laughs> and they said, uh, they start looking at me and I said, if you stop me again, I'll come after every one of you. There's five of them. I said, you'll never see your kids or nothing again. Don't you, don't you ever pull me over again. So the chief of police of Calgary called me in and he said, look here, he showed me his name tag. He was Irish. That meant something. Okay. And he said, uh, Tommy, you take it easy. And I just looked at him, never said a word. And he said, them detectives will never stop you again. You'll never see him again. Okay? Okay. And he said, I'm not your enemy, but don't ever come in here again. And I said, I said, uh, thank you. And you know what? I never seen them, them goose anymore after that. So I don't know. You're, you're supposed to be very educated and, you know, you're supposed to do things right and everything. But I think a little bit of force sometimes makes things a little easier, don't you? Yeah, in a way, I agree. I mean, a little bit of force sometimes helps out, but as long as it, you apply it, like, not too much, you know? You push yeah. a little bit uh, the envelope, well, but not too much. Unfortunately, 
Irish Mafia, when they say there's going to be something happening, it happens. <laughs> I can Guaranteed. Like there's, uh, you know, like I wrote that book and I was trying to publish it and uh, I talked to a producer down in Hollywood and they were all saying, well, we'll give you so much for it. I think I was going to own 5% of the movie. They had 95 and I said, well, I'm not going to do it. So then they had critics actually writing about gangster ways, saying the guy's a phony, this, that, and everything. So I got a hold of my friends, the Irish Mafia, and I told them about what was going on. Well, within five hours, the critics were writing good things about gangster ways. <laughs> and yeah. them guys that, that gave him the orders got their legs fucking broke, okay? So that's the way force goes. It's good, it's wonderful. It makes things happen. So guys, there you have oh, it. Oh, I'm sorry, you're looking at that. This was interesting. When Tony, I... say not goodbye to the nice people. <laughs> you leaving? <laughs> goodbye, you guys. Goodbye. <laughs> Don't follow my footsteps. <laughs> okay, follow my footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do I gotta do? I gotta meet Okay, you see you guys in the next one. Yeah, this thanks. has been a different one, so hope you liked it and who knows maybe we can do something like this in the future again if we meet other people in our journey you never know what's gonna happen that's the beauty of traveling so thank you for watching guys don't forget to subscribe love share press the buttons don't do what tommy did do the good thing so bye have a nice one